All right. Our first question is from Britt Etheridge. What exercises should you include if your routine is to get a flat, tight? I, I keep screwing these things up. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping that. <laughs> what exercises should you include in your routine to get a flat, tight stomach? All right. Flat, tight, midsection. It's a, one, of the most flat and tight. one of the most common uh, goals that people have um, when they work out. Number one, you got to get lean. This is the big one. Um, I've worked with lots of clients who that's their goal, and but their body fat percentage is, is too high. And regardless of how you train the muscles underneath uh, your, your, your body fat, um, it's, it's not going to work if you have too much body fat on your midsection, especially men. Men tend to store uh, body fat in the, in the midsection. And so they'll work out their core and do all the right exercises, and, which is great. You get stronger better stability, but you still have the the belly. So yeah. number one, you've got to get le- lean. Number two, you know, strengthening all the muscles in the midsection are going to make your midsection feel tighter. Anytime you strengthen a muscle, it feels tighter. It feels stronger. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Like you, you poke somebody who doesn't lift weights in their arm and it feels a little flabby, mm-hmm. touch somebody's arm who's, who works out, and you automatically feel that there's muscle there. Muscle is a dense tissue. So there's no wrong exercises here. Um, as long as you're doing them right, anything from crunches to planks to reverse crunches and, and, and you know exercises for the obliques, they're all going to be really, really good. Now, there are exercises that target specifically the muscles that draw in mm, the, the midsection. TVA. Yeah, the TVA, right? Um, and this one's, a, uh, this one's a big one for, especially for women after they have uh, babies for the first time. I, I, years ago, this was a long time ago, I had a trainer that worked for me, um, very fit uh, young lady, and then she got pregnant. It was her first baby. Then she had the baby, and she got lean pretty quickly because she was she was really into resistance training, great metabolism. But she she would complain. She's like, man, it's so crazy. I'm lean now, but I have this like pooch in my lower ab area. Be- even though she was lean, she's like, it, it's not as flat as it used to be. And we had another trainer on board, and this is this was a long time ago. So, uh, you know, back in those days, I think we didn't really understand training the TVA as much as we do now. But we did have a trainer on staff that was really educated, and she goes, "Oh, are you doing any exercises to strengthen the transverse abdominis? This is a muscle that surrounds the midsection. If you want to flex it right now while you're listening to this podcast, just draw on your draw stomach. It in. Yeah. yeah, it's like when you're at the beach and you want to." suck in your stomach. That's what that muscle does. But when you're when you're pregnant, that muscle has to stretch and atrophy to allow room for the baby to grow. So when you're done, you have the baby, you work out your abs, you work out your obliques, but if you don't target the TVA, um, it may not ever get as tight as it was before where it holds in your organs, essentially. So like uh, the drawn-in maneuver, cat-cow, or like uh, the vacuum pose, vacuum like pose. things like that would be, be great. Even... Uh, you know, in, in our prime program where you're up against the wall and you're doing that check where we're trying to then, you know, get your get all points of contact to touch the wall. A lot of times you're going to notice right away, uh, you know, with with where your discrepancies lie and like how to then draw in a little more effectively and, and get rid of the rib flare and everything else uh, by getting access to the TVA. Yep. And the, the other thing is be patient. Uh, the, the stomach area for most of us is one of the, the last places for it to come off. That's I true. Think, I think yeah. uh, we, we're, we're always looking for like the, the quick answer or the quick exercise that's going to make my stomach look a certain way. And, and the, the truth is that both men and women uh, store body fat in the stomach area and, and it takes a long time to get a six pack. I mean, uh, I mean, you gave that stat, Sal, that was mind blowing not that long ago that there's more millionaires than there are six packs in the world. Mm-hmm. So it's not easy. Okay. It's pretty fucking hard to make a million dollars. It's even harder to get a six pack. So, and, and a lot of the reason why it's hard, it's not because, uh, it's, it's so difficult that most people can't do it. It's just the consistency it takes to get to that. Just like the consistency it probably takes to become a millionaire is working towards that. You, it's not something that you do overnight. You just got to keep plugging away at it, and you'll see incremental change. And I think uh, you got to where you got to be careful. Where uh, I, I think I have to constantly coach to when I'm speaking to somebody that's uh, chasing this goal is the the day to day fluctuations. 
Uh, and this is normally what gives mm. people the they get discouraged or they give up or they they make crazy dramatic changes when they didn't need to, mm -hmm. and you know really easily. Uh, and and we've all felt this, right? We've all woke up in the morning and been like, oh wow, my I've, my stomach looks so much flatter than what it looked like yesterday in the middle of the day or whatever. You know, the, uh, when you uh, eat carbohydrates, you drink water. Uh, you eat something that could be potentially inflammatory. All these things could cause like this, this bloat in your stomach and make you feel like you're quote unquote fatter. Mm. Uh, when you're not necessarily fatter, it's just your body uh, reacting to those things that I just said. And so it gives that illusion. And then you either, one, you give up and think you're failing at your attempt to get a flatter stomach, or two, you do something extreme to try and fix it. it you know, you can't let that get in your head. You just got to stay consistent with the process of dieting and staying consistent for a long period of time, and it'll eventually get there. Yeah, that was the point I was going to bring up, too. Like, it's a lot of times, like, you know, that, that gut, that internal inflammation. Uh, you know, from being intolerant to certain types of foods, it hasn't been addressed. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, you're going to carry that with you and it's going to be pushing on your stomach. Meanwhile, you're trying to gain that flat stomach by doing all these exercises, by, you know, really trying to target the area and everything. But it's like you're spinning your wheels. I actually measured it. I've actually measured it in some clients. Uh, I've worked with uh, clients that I would also have them work with uh, somebody who's a food intolerant, you know, specialist or somebody who works with the gut. And we've actually measured it where we would take a waist measurement. They didn't get leaner. They didn't lose any weight, but they would lose an inch or two inches off their waist because they were able to change their diet to where they were eating foods that were easier for them to digest mm -hmm. or they solved a, you know, bacterial overgrowth issue like SIBO or whatever. And it's like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden my stomach is flat and I couldn't get anywhere near this point with exercise uh, and workouts and stuff because it all I had to do with bloat and with inflammation. Yeah. Now back to the TVA. The other thing you can do is activate the TVA muscle while you do your other core exercises. So when you're doing like a crunch, your uh, your instinctually you'll push your abs out a little bit because the abs will pull and they'll try to shorten the distance between your pelvis and your rib cage. And what you'll notice when you do a crunch is your abs come up a little bit. You'll see them kind of come up a little higher. Try sucking them down while you do your crunch. And what you're basically doing is you're activating the TVA while you're doing your ab or core exercises. So you get the dual benefit of working your core, but also activating and strengthening the muscles that keep the waist tight and small. And also, you know, an excessive lower back arch and like really addressing postural issues too will help to give you that like flatter stomach look just by addressing your hips and like where their position is. And the cue for both what you just both ended on right now is, and I love to teach this, I believe we have a YouTube video where we get into this. Um, you know, if you're laying on the ground, you're getting ready to do a crunch before you just sit up and do a crunch, actually think to press the low back flat first, that mm -hmm. will create that draw in that Sal's talking about activate the TVA, uh, and then do the crunch. So you're in a crunch position, you're about ready to do your crunch or full sit up before you do it, press the low back flat down. You'll feel your core activate to, to hold it, hold it flat and down, keep that tense and then sit up. Uh, this will make a big difference.